Minecraft's oceans have a ton of loot buildings in them, so in this ocean structure guide I'll explain the best way to find and raid them. Now the great thing about ocean structures inside of Minecraft is that basically all of them are extremely common. Although they may be listed as being a rare structure, there really isn't a rare structure inside of Minecraft's oceans as they're so large. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the shipwreck. Now some things you have to be careful about when you're exploring any ocean structure in Minecraft. The first one is Drowns, and there's also guardians in the guardian temple and they'll talk about that a little bit later you're going to want to make sure to have night vision as well as water breathing or at very least some water breathing when exploring ocean structures the night vision though is also incredibly useful for sort of spotting out structures that are underneath the water chest boats can be great for storing loot that you find and having a close as well as a ranged weapon is good as of course things like drowns you might want to hit them from far away but also get them if you're really close so shipwrecks can generate inside of any ocean biome or even be sort of buried under the sand on a beach There's multiple ways they can generate. They can generate upright like this, but they can also generate entirely upside down, oftentimes with a lot of them broken off, or even on their side. And for instance, this shipwreck is on its side, the chest has sort of fallen down to the bottom of the shipwreck. Shipwrecks also do not necessarily have to be underwater. For instance, this is a complete shipwreck, and sometimes they can generate on the surface of the water along a beach. Also, as you can tell, the shipwreck is made with wood, and it's made with different types of wood specifically, so you'll never find a mangrove shipwreck, but there's also no acacia shipwrecks inside of Java Edition. Inside of Bedrock, any logs that are on a shipwreck will be stripped logs, which I think does make sense as sort of like the water would wash away the bark. Now they contain up to three chests. The first chest is the treasure chest. Now this can have what you'd expect. Different materials, so lapis, gold, iron, iron ingots, emeralds. There's also a rare chance of diamonds there. Then there is the supply chest, and this will contain mostly food, but also sometimes gunpowder or TNT, as well as Suspicious Stew and some potential leather armor. This chest can also include in it bamboo and moss blocks, and this is really important because things like diamonds you can get anywhere, but if you're nowhere near a bamboo jungle, then getting a singular piece of bamboo in a shipwreck chest could be the only real way that you can effectively get that without having to travel a long way. And the final chest is the map chest. This generally contains a singular buried treasure map, as well as paper, sometimes some feathers, compasses, clocks, and other sort of map related items. I'll go a little bit more into the buried treasure map later. If you have water breathing, these are fairly easy to raid, but if you do not, what I would suggest doing is swimming down to the bottom of the shipwreck and placing a door somewhere useful. Once you have that door placed down, you can use it as a water source, then grab the treasure out of the chest, and before we drown, go to the lower part of the ship. If you're in Java, this door will actually often already be there to be an instant water source without any effort needed, but if it's not there, be sure to place down a door as well, so you can then get the items out of the other chests. Shipwrecks generate incredibly frequently, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's the shipwreck that we were currently in, and if we go just just over this way you can see there's already another shipwreck on the ground, incredibly incredibly close, this one is on its side, but if we go back to this shipwreck nearby it to the other direction, there is also some other shipwrecks, so for instance this direction here, we can see there's a shipwreck right here that's completely upside down, and something really important to know about the incomplete shipwrecks, as that's what most of them are, is that they'll generally have not all of their chests, so for instance this one right here has the map chest, and if we go underneath it will also have the treasure chest, but oftentimes certain chests of those cannot be present. So in most shipwreck chests you find there's not three chests, however if you have a full shipwreck make sure to never leave it until you found all three of the chests there. And to take a good look as well, as I've seen many players only grab the items from one of the shipwreck chests and leave it thinking it's raided. Now shipwrecks buried treasure as well as ocean ruins, and we will go more into those other two later on in the video, all contain loot chests in them. And of course getting the treasure chests from the ocean is really important. So here is the absolute best thing to remember. If you find a dolphin when you're underwater, feed that dolphin by right clicking on it, either salmon or cod. You'll notice it gets these particles and it starts moving away from you. If you follow that dolphin, it will eventually lead you to a treasure bearing structure. Now you'll notice over here the dolphin even just had particles to show that it's found the structure. It's sort of happy that it has and it's now back in the mode where it can give us dolphins grace and all of that. So obviously the only problem with feeding the dolphins fish and then them leading you to structures is that oftentimes they will lead you to structures that you've already raided. Sometimes removing the chests can help, but oftentimes it's better to find a new dolphin 
weapon that's kind of far away, and they should be able to lead you to a new area, but still it's an incredibly useful technique to finding loot structures in the game, and really is the only main use of the dolphin. But let's talk about one of those structures that dolphins can lead you to, the ocean ruins. Now ocean ruins can generate inside of every single ocean biome, however there is a main difference. If the ocean ruins generate in the warm or the lukewarm ocean, they will be the variants that are mainly made out of sand and sandstone materials. However, if you are in a cold ocean, a normal ocean, or a frozen ocean, then the ocean ruins there will be made out of stone type materials to basically reflect the gravel seafloor and the sand seafloor. Ocean ruins are generally underwater, but there is a small chance that they generate above land with some strange generation chances. And this can often look like there is a sort of a village ruins or something like this. That's always a really cool thing is finding the ocean ruins in an area that is not underneath the water. Now 70% of ocean ruins are just a singular small structure that you might even find almost completely buried inside of your world. In fact, I've even had times where I found an ocean ruin underneath the ground a considerable distance just because of the way that they generate. However, 30% of ocean ruins are much different. Those are large ocean ruins, and there's also a 90% chance with a large ocean ruin to have 4 to 8 of the small ocean ruins that generate all around it. This is how you sort of find those ruined city structures that are fairly common with the ocean ruins. In fact, although those massive groups of ancient ruins aren't that common, I think they seem to be because a lot of the single ocean ruins are so well hid, it's actually hard to see where they are. So this large ocean ruin is very rare, as it's in that 10% chance that does not have additional small ruins generated around it. However, there are still some big differences between this and a small ocean ruin. The obvious one being, of course, it's not small, it's very large. But the second one being that the loot chest of the large ocean ruin is different. So if we were to dig up this chest that's in the ocean ruin, you'll notice that there is an enchanted book here. And there's more or less two main differences between the standard ocean ruins chest and this one. And that is in the large ocean ruins chest, there can be enchanted books of any type, as well as the chance for a golden apple, but other than that the loot table is incredibly similar. Now here's an example of a large ocean ruin that also has other ruins beside it. You can notice that trident around there and it's always really important to be careful around the ocean ruins. But Minecraft 1.20 will change the ocean ruins. That's because the sniffer was of course voted into Minecraft on Minecraft Live and part of it is that there'll be sniffer eggs that generate inside of ocean's ruins chests. Now generally ocean ruins can have things like gold helmets, coal, rotten flesh, wheat, as well as of course gold nuggets, and in the large ones like I said earlier some enchanted books or maybe even enchanted golden apples, but now with the ability to also have the sniffer eggs, the value of the ocean ruins just went from 0 to 100, as of course this is the only way of getting this new mob that'll be in the game. So hopefully Minecraft 1.20 will come soon, and then we'll have access to these awesome sniffer eggs. And of course in terms of strategies to most easily find the chest inside of these structures, I would generally suggest just having a good quality shovel so you can dig the bottom of the structure and try and find it. Almost always the chest will be hidden by let's say sand or gravel, although very rarely it'll be hid by something else. But in almost all cases, just having a good quality shovel is all you really need to go through this structure and find it. Pickaxes can be good though too, because sometimes part of the structure will sort of be hidden, and that leads us on to the next ocean generated structure, which is the buried treasure. Now buried treasure are mostly found with the buried treasure maps, although you can also use seed finders. You'll know if you're inside the buried treasure map because it'll start to fill out and then you can start walking towards where that X is. Now you'll notice the X on the map there is not on the beach, it generally is. Inside of Java Edition, buried treasure can only generate in beach biomes. Now in Java Edition, the buried treasure can only generate in snowy and standard beach biomes. However, in Bedrock, it can also generate in stony beach biomes. And in Bedrock, buried treasure as a whole is much more common. In fact, insanely common to the point that there's probably 10 buried treasure chests in Bedrock for every one buried treasure chest in Java, and that's kind of good and bad, as of course they're a little bit too common, but there's also the point where in Java, there is the issue of oftentimes having duplicate treasure maps. Then once you've more or less aligned your pointer with that red X, you can try mining down and seeing if you'll find the buried treasure chest. But something you can also do if you don't want to try and line it up, is if you're on Java edition, to turn on your chunk borders, and turn on your F3 menu, and you're going to try and look at this thing called block and chunk. 
and I'll highlight that on the screen, but it's more or less right under the XYZ at the end in brackets. And what we want to do is make that say 99. You can notice we did line this up correctly because it does say 99. Also, this sort of piece of gravel here that's sticking out is a bit obvious, so when we break that, we can now see there is the treasure from the buried treasure chest. Although there's no easy way of finding chunk borders in Bedrock Edition, if you do know where those chunk borders are, in Bedrock, the buried treasure will always be at the chunk section of 88. You can find this by going to the northwest border of the chunk and counting out eight blocks this way and then counting that block eight blocks this way and more or less that'll lead you to where that buried treasure chest will be there. Now the buried treasure maps themselves are only found in two places and that is in the shipwrecks as well as the ocean ruins. The loot of the buried treasure itself definitely is treasure as it can have multiple diamonds, TNT, it always has a heart of the sea. There can be some random prismarine items, cooked salmon and cooked cod, and even water breathing potions, definitely making us lead to believe that this is sort of an ancient supply chest. There can be iron and gold and other treasures like that, as well as some iron tools like an iron sword. But in Bedrock Edition the loot has some additions to it, so for instance in that version, you can actually get a couple types of music discs inside of that buried treasure, although I have no idea why those specific music discs are able to generate inside of Bedrock Edition's buried treasure. It is definitely an interesting feature and adds some lore to the game as to why maybe those specific songs were popular at the time of that treasure being buried in the ground. But now on to what is likely the most important and definitely the oldest ocean structure and that is the underwater temple, guardian temple, ocean monument monument or whatever other name you want to give it. Now I've actually made a full guide on how to raid the ocean monument and I will have an eye card on the screen right now if you want to check that out, but I'll still give some nice tips and tricks on how to raid this structure inside of this video as of course it is the most important ocean structure there is by far, it only generates in the deep underwater variants. Now of course this makes a lot of sense because of how big they are, they would need that entire space to generate into the game, but it is also something to keep in mind if you're trying to find one, to not be near the coast of something, and that it's very unlikely that you'll ever find an ocean monument right next to land. They also always generate at the same height, and you can tell that because over here it's actually cut very deeply into the stone on the side there to make it generate without looking too too weird. And beneath it, these prismarine legs that the structure is sort of supported on will be of the length that's needed to make it look stable. So there are multiple methods to raid this structure, but I'm going to show you the easiest one. You're going to want to have invisibility potions, as well as water breathing potions and night vision potions. Something kind of interesting is if you have the invisibility potion, then the guardians will not target you at all. Even if you punch the guardians, they'll still not know you're there. The guardians cannot tell that you're there whatsoever if you have the invisibility on. Although they cannot tell if you have a tool in your hand, they'll definitely get mad. If you have your armor on, they'll be able to instantly tell that you're there. Now there's only three reasons to raid an ocean monument. The first one is prismarine, the second one is for sponges, and the third one is for the gold blocks in the center. Something that's really important to know is that there's two types of hostile mobs inside of the ocean monument. The first one is the guardians. Now these things aren't that dangerous, but if there's a lot of them, they can be quite a difficult mob to defeat. But there's sort of an older, more mature version of the guardian that you want to kill because it'll eventually give you an effect known as mining fatigue and there it is right on cue and more or less mining fatigue means that you cannot break a block whatsoever no matter how hard you try it might take minutes and minutes now in bedrock edition mining fatigue isn't quite as bad but it's still quite a serious effect and so to stop having that effect so you can gain any of the treasures from this structure you want to first make a small structure out of dirt like this put tnt there then put a block of redstone on top so that's tnt that's fully surrounded by blocks that's in the air, and that will have the power to break through some of the prismarine and give you access to these Elder Guardians. Now there's three Elder Guardians, the first one is on the roof there, and the other two are on what are known as the wings of this structure. So if you look at the front of the structure, that's right there and right there. So if we place our TNT, then surround it in dirt and place that redstone block on top when that explodes, we'll then have access to go into the room where the Elder Guardian is. And that's the exact same on the other side as well. Now there's sort of two ways that you can try and kill the Elder guardian. The first one is when you're invisible to hit it. Now because you have the invisibility effect, even if you hit it, it'll not hurt you. However, sometimes it will give you the thorns effect. So as long as you eat some food to keep up your health, you can go up to all these elder guardians and kill them, even if you're completely invisible, and they will not try and hurt you whatsoever. Also be aware that elder guardians will immediately despawn if you're ever in peaceful mode. So if you want to make sure to get the additional sponge from these, then make sure not to be in peaceful mode around this structure. So those are the elder guardians killed, but even though they are dead, we still have the mining fatigue effect for a little bit more time. You can either drink some milk and then re-get your invisibility night 
night vision and water breathing, or you can just wait for it to wear off. Now the first loot you'll likely want to go for is the sponge room, and there can actually be multiple sponge rooms. In fact, I've found ocean monuments that have four sponge rooms really rarely, but sometimes they'll only have one or even no sponge rooms. Now these are generally in about the center of the ocean monument, and they look like this. And if you have a hoe, because that is the quickest way of breaking the sponges, you can go here and quickly collect all of these sponges. And generally these rooms will have just under half a stack of sponges in them. Sometimes they'll even be really close to each other. So for instance, in this monument, there's two sponge rooms. One of them is right here, and the other one is incredibly close to it over here. And you can notice the sponges sort of generate in a random pattern on the roof of this area. Also, it's always good to be aware of the fact that it's very hard to see items floating at the top. So for instance, right here, although there's a lot of those items there, sometimes it's almost impossible to see an item floating at the top of water. So when you're in this sponge room, make sure to kind of swim along the entire top of it to see if you're missing any sponge. The second treasure you're going to want to go for, even though it's not super amazing, is the eight gold blocks in the center of this structure. Generally, these are easiest found by going into the main entrance and then just walking to the center of the structure, but sometimes that doesn't happen, so often mining to that center of the structure can be a good idea. Once we're in that obvious central room, you want to go to the dark prismarine cube that is here, break these blocks, and you'll see the start of a gold cube. I think that when this structure was added to the game, gold was a bit harder to get, but now gold is so easy with things like gold farms, it really isn't that good of loot. But still, it's nice to get these random gold blocks for free, having over a stack of gold instantly. And of course, the third thing you can get here being the prismarine, so you can break apart these motion monuments if you want, but it's almost always smarter to build a prismarine farm out of this structure, but still you can go around here and break these blocks to get yourself a good supply of all this. And on to the last main ocean structure, which is the ruined portal. Underwater ruined portals are almost the exact same as above ground ruined portals, but there's some really important differences that you do need to know about. The first one is when they first generate in, oftentimes there will be invalid kelp that are on some blocks. For instance, things like kelp generating on top of the magma blocks here. So these are often found by seeing some random pieces of floating kelp at the surface of the water. The other thing though that's incredibly important to be aware of is the fact of these magma blocks and what can actually happen if you're not careful when boating through your world is you might go over a ruined portal and if you do not notice the effect your boat will wiggle back and forth and eventually will actually sink underneath the water and be stuck there. You won't be able to get into your boat, it'll just be sort of stuck underwater and you'll have to break it under here to get it back. And in terms of the loot of this structure, again it's the same as the standard ruined portals. Generally it's somewhat garbage, although oftentimes you will have some decent enchantments on these golden tools, although there is a chance for an enchanted golden apple and even standard golden apples, so it's always worthwhile to look in here, also giving you the only source of crying obsidian inside of the overworld, as well as the only source of netherrack. Something interesting is that the ruined portals that are underwater, the stone in them, will have more moss on those than any other type of ruined portal, except they do have the same amount of moss on them as the jungle ruined portals, sort of showing they become slimy and grown over over time. And the best way to get the treasure is to simply find a magma block that's here, press the shift key or your crouch key so that you stay on top of there and gaining your air, then you can slightly crawl off of it, look in the chest, grab the items out of it, and then go back here. Also a good strategy is to stay on that magma block, break the chest, have all the items float up, and then grab them. If you want to learn more about ocean biomes, be sure to check out my ocean guide. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe and have a great day. Goodbye.